Okay, and then now I'm gonna test video stabilization. So this is 4K footage right now. I'm gonna hold it with one hand. And I can play with the zoom dial to zoom in as I'm walking in. Now there's 3.66. Hey everybody, I hope you guys are all getting safe. So this is the Xiaomi 14 Ultra Global Edition. And this camera hardware right now is the best on the market. The only other phone that maybe has a case to argue against it is the Oppo Find X7 Ultra. So this phone has a main camera using the new Sony Leisha 900 sensor, one inch sensor, and it's paired with a variable aperture. So a physical shutter that will open wide or close up a little bit giving you an aperture between f1.6 to f4 the other three lenses one ultra wide two zoom lens all three of them use sony imx858 which has an image sensor size of one over 2.5 inch now this is a relatively large sensor size for an ultra wide camera and zoom lenses the only other phone that can match it and surpass it is the oppo find x7 ultra against anything else the s24 ultra pixel 8 pro iphone 15 pro max the sensor sizes here are just much bigger but that's not all all four lenses have fast aperture too so the main camera like i said variable aperture all the way up to f1.6 and the 3x zoom lens and the ultra wide camera have an f1.8 aperture that's much faster than what apple samsung and google are putting in their cameras and even the periscope zoom lens here has an f2.5 aperture much faster than what the oppo find x7 ultra is offering so basically if you factor in megapixel count image sensor size and aperture the xiaomi 14 ultra has the best combination right now of any phone and to take advantage of that xiaomi also built a photography kit so this is a separate purchase but this is a case that snaps onto the phone that's not all though you have a camera handle that you slide in and then once you lock it with a switch, you have to saw what looks like a real camera, so to speak. You have a two-step shutter button. If you press halfway down the shutter, it will begin focusing. You press it all the way down to take the photo. You have a dedicated zoom dial so you can zoom in and out as you're moving the camera, freeing up your thumb. So now I'm recording a video. I can zoom in to my dad. And zoom back out. The zoom action, you know, isn't as smooth as the iPhone, but it's pretty good for Android. So I can kind of do things like pan and zoom at the same time. So this remote handle has a battery inside too. So it can charge the phone while it's being used and it can power the battery handle when it's separate from the camera. So that means you can prop this somewhere and you can still control shutter and zooming with just this handle. But that's not all. There's also a filter ring right here. So the package comes with two other filter rings with a filter thread so you can put on things like an nd filter so what i'm going to do with this video is this is more of an overview of the xiaomi 14 ultra i'm going to look at the overall hardware i will do some side-by-side -side camera tests against the vivo x100 pro but this will not be the dedicated camera shootout that will come later because i am going to tokyo soon okay let's back up and take a look at overall hardware so the design language is very similar to the xiaomi 13 ultra and the 12s ultra you have this full leather vegan leather back this year, the phone's back is completely flat without that slope that was in the 13 Ultra. The camera module is still circular. It still sticks out quite a lot, but considering the camera module in here, I think that is acceptable. Around the front, you have a 6.7 inch OLED panel, and this is using that same design in the Xiaomi 14 Pro that I liked a lot. So this is a screen that has subtle curvature on all four sides, top, bottom, left, and right. That means when you're swiping on the edges from the sides and from the bottom, your thumb is running through a curved edge. So you get the benefit of a curvy screen. It feels a little bit smoother on your thumb, but at the same time, because the curvature is so subtle and the frame is a little bit wider, you still have the feeling of a flat screen phone. So the sides kind of feel like the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you know, the wider than usual frame, except the screen still curves a little bit on all four sides. I love this design. It's like the best of both worlds. The 14 Ultra is a little bit thick at 9.1 millimeters. That's not including the camera module. And it weighs 219 grams. So a little bit on the heavy side too for some people. But for me, who have been used to using the biggest flagship phone, this is actually perfectly fine for me. This is a very comfortable phone to hold. Okay, so we're gonna test the 3.2X Tele lens. It has a floating lens system that can change focus distance. So you can get really close to something. So you can get kind of like a macro shot, but you can keep the natural bokeh. You don't have to, because if you shoot macros with the ultra wide, you have to bring it all the way this close, but this one you do not. I mean, look at the details and you still get natural bokeh. Okay, so I'm quite far from my dad right now. Let's test the zoom lens of the 14 ultra. 
So I'm going to do a 10 times zoom. And now I'm going to do a 30 times zoom. I'll get lower, see if I can get some background depth. And then now I'm going to test video stabilization. So this is 4K footage right now. I'm going to hold it with one hand walking downstairs. And I can play with the zoom dial to zoom in as I'm walking in. Now there's 3.6x. Back out to the ultra wide camera. Back to 5.66 right now. Ooh, I'm seeing really good natural bokeh around my dial right now. So now there's 1.2x main camera right here. Having two good zoom lenses gives me a lot of focal length versatility, which makes this camera very fun to do street photography. Check out this 20x zoom shot of the bird. Look at the freaking details. It's insane. In side-by-side -side comparisons, I prefer Xiaomi's color signs over Vivo's most of the time. And a Knight X100 Pro will also need to use night mode more often than Xiaomi because Xiaomi's cameras have larger sensors and faster aperture. But I think Vivo's portraits are still better, which I'll get to later. Okay, I just ran a 20 minute wildlife extreme stress test. And as you can see, the score is very good. 88.8% .8 stability. The first loop and the 20th loop, the score is very close. That means this phone, you can push it to the max for 20 minutes. And even at the end, performance is still near peak level. The cooling system in there is good, along with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. You have stereo speakers, obviously. So let me uh, bring the mic over. Okay, after three days of use, I can say the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's camera hardware is the best for now. Whether it's the main camera or the two zoom lenses, you can just shoot in normal mode and get natural bokeh because the sensors are so large and the aperture is so fast. This is good news because I actually think Xiaomi's portrait mode is still not good. I've been saying that since the 12S Ultra, like the so-called Leica portrait system. I just don't like how the shots come out like 50% of the time. And on top of that, when you use portrait mode, you're locked at maximum 75 millimeter. So that means you're only using that 3.2x tele lens. You can't even shoot portrait mode with the periscope zoom lens. I don't know why. If you compare portraits against the Vivo X100 Pro, I think the Vivo's portraits generally look better. I think the Vivo X100 Pro's portrait mode is heads and shoulders better than any other phone on the market right now. But the good news is Xiaomi's camera hardware is so good, you don't really need to use portrait mode. Like if you shoot photos with the 5X lens, in auto normal mode you still get natural bokeh anyway this is a high megapixel camera with a large sensor and a fast aperture you're getting a shot that's full of details full of dynamic range and then you can take it into photoshop later or lightroom and make edits to it in post generally speaking if you take a zoom shot with an iphone it looks good on the phone screen but then you take it to a monitor and you blow it up you see a lot of noise you see soft details that is not the case with the xiaomi 14 ultra or other large sensor zoom lenses like the Oppo Find X7 Ultra. Sensor size absolutely matters. Software can only do so much. But Xiaomi has a lot of software tricks too. There's a movie mode, which is basically pro mode for a video. So this is basically like portrait mode for video. There should be some artificial bokeh around my head. The audio you're hearing is also coming from the internal mic of the phone. You can also apply these LUTs, which changes the color signs and make it look like a vintage film filter or like classic film, Fuji film cameras. It's very hipster, but I kind of like it. It's fun to play with. So you factor in all these software stuff along with the top-notch hardware and the variable aperture. This gives you a camera system that is very fun to play with and it's a little bit overwhelming at first, but this is a camera that will reward you as you go around experimenting with the lens, snapping all over. Like for example, they have that variable aperture. I think during the day, you may not see a big difference because really when you shoot at f1.4 and f4, you're only really seeing the degree of background blur shift from stronger to less. But at night, you can actually see how much light it takes in. So you can control light intake a little bit. So the variable aperture does come in handy in specific situations, but not all the time. But you can just set an auto and let the Xiaomi 14 Ultra decide for you. So anyway, this is not a full review of the 14 Ultra. This is just a first look hands-on with a camera test. Like I said, I will do a more in-depth camera comparison between these two guys later because I'm going to Japan and I'll be filming there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. It will help me a lot. I really put a lot of effort into these camera tests because it takes a lot of work to go outside and film everything outside. It would be a hell lot easier if I just sit in front of a studio 
you know, in a controlled environment. Those videos, like, you can do in, like, two hours, man. But these type of videos, it takes, like, a day, two days. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, man. I'll be back. Thanks for watching.